This video is brought to you by Campfire Technology. More on that later. One issue that just about every language needs to tackle is how to combine multiple clauses into the same sentence. Let's say we have two verbs, I ran and I fell. We could express these using two separate sentences, but if they're related to each other or happened one after the other, most languages will have some strategy for combining the two verbs into one sentence. Some languages, like Mandarin, are perfectly happy to simply place the two verbs in apposition, while others, like English, demand a conjunction or some other connecting element. But another fairly common strategy found in many of the world's languages is to use a converb construction. To put it simply, a converb is a form that turns a verb stem into an adverb, such that a verb like to run becomes a word that means something along the lines of runningly, or while running, or in the manner of running. And once a verb stem has been made into a converb, it can be used to modify another verb in the same sentence, which for our example we can clumsily translate as I runningly fell, or I fell while running. If the converb has any arguments or adjuncts, then the entire phrase gets interpreted as an adverb modifying the main verb, in this case becoming something like I fell while running to the shop, or I fell in the manner of running to the shop. Not only that, but many languages have multiple types of converbs that each specify a different kind of temporal or causal relationship between the two clauses. There might be separate forms to imply that the two clauses happened simultaneously, or sequentially, or that one clause happened as a result of the other. Using these sorts of converb constructions, we can string together as many clauses as we want. About 35% of the world's languages use converbs in some capacity, but the exact way that they're used can vary significantly from language to language. The most commonly attested pathway to the development of converbs is for them to evolve from other non-finite verb forms, usually verbal nouns like gerunds or infinitives, or from verbal adjectives like participles. If we wanted to combine the phrases, the man was going to the shop, and the man saw a dog, one way we could do it would be to turn the first verb into a noun, with the meaning of the act or state of going to the shop and then using an adposition, or even a case marker, to convey a spatial relationship, which may get interpreted as something like, the man, in the act of going to the shop, saw a dog. And over time, the combination of the verbal noun plus the case marker gets reanalyzed as its own distinct verb form, and its meaning is interpreted as having an adverbial sense. Alternatively, another common way for converbs to evolve is from participles, which in languages like Ancient Greek and Latin are used in much the same way as converbs for the purposes of combining clauses. Crucially though, participles are adjectives, and therefore they modify a specific noun in the clause, not the verb itself like a converb does. But with time, the participle may come to be reanalyzed as describing the clause as a whole rather than any particular noun within it. Some languages are content in letting participles serve double duty in this way, sometimes giving them the rather confusing term, adverbial participles. But just like with converbs that derive from verbal nouns, it's quite common for these participles to combine with case markers or other adpositional morphology to form new, full-fledged converbs. Each of the language's case markers may independently combine with the various verbal nouns or participles, or sometimes even other converbs, to give rise to a different type of converb with the case marker's original meaning being metaphorically extended to describe the relationship between the converb clause and the main clause. In our earlier example, we used a locative case marker to encode that the action of the converb happens at the same time as the main verb, having a similar function to the English conjunctions while or when. This simultaneous or imperfective converb is one of the most cross-linguistically common types of converb, and usually evolves from case markers with some sort of locative function. Meanwhile, the ablative, or a similar case, often gives rise to a perfective or anterior converb, which signals that the converb clause was completed before the action of the main verb phrase, roughly approximated in English with having done, or after. Many languages also distinguish a specific converb for sequential or consecutive actions, denoting that the converb clause and the main clause happened one after the other. 
The purposive converb indicates that the main verb was carried out in order to complete the action of the converb clause. This form usually evolves from the dative, allative, or sometimes instrumental cases. Conversely, the causal converb signifies that the main clause was carried out as a result of the converb clause, and usually evolves from the instrumental or occasionally the ergative case. Many languages will also have a distinct conditional converb, which sets up the converb clause as a condition under which the main verb happens, equivalent to the English word if. This converb most often comes from an ablative or locative case, which when combined with the verbal noun or participle may lead to an interpretation of in the event of. The concessive converb is used to draw a contrast between the converb clause and the main clause, similar to although in English. This form usually comes from ablative morphology, although it's sometimes also formed from the conditional converb. Those are some of the most common types of converbs, but individual languages will often mix and match case markers and verb forms to create some very specific interpretations. Some languages have a terminative converb that marks the converb clause as the condition under which the main verb will end. Some have a converb that emphasizes that the two clauses happen immediately one after the other. Some have a converb that defines the two clauses as happening in the same location, or any number of other specialized interpretations. Languages may vary in the number of converbs they distinguish, ranging from only a handful, like Turkish, to as many as several dozen, like Korean or Achvach. However, just as how case markers usually fill various non-canonical functions, any given converb will typically be used in a variety of ways beyond its default interpretation. Even in languages with very large converb inventories, some converbs will have a much broader or more general sense than others. Equally, however, a language may also have multiple different converbs that all fill the same or a very similar function, only distinguished from each other by what specific contexts they're allowed to be used in. Since converbs usually evolve from non-finite verb forms, most of the marking for person, number, and tense will go on the main verb of the sentence, while the converbs usually won't take any of the typical verb morphology. Or if they do, they'll usually only take a reduced or limited set, although there are occasional exceptions to this. Most often, the subject of the converb clause will be assumed to be the same as the subject of the main verb unless otherwise specified. Once converbs have evolved, they're very likely to be grammaticalized into new constructions. Beyond the clause chaining we discussed earlier, converbs serve as a very convenient way to combine multiple verb meanings into a single lexeme. If a specific converb phrase sees especially frequent use, its constituents may end up fusing into a single adverb. In Finnish, the word for clearly, or visibly, derives from a converb clause meaning in the manner of seeing with eyes, while the word meaning in fact, or honestly, comes from the converb phrase while speaking the truth. Converbs can also give rise to new tenses, aspects, or moods when used in auxiliary verb constructions. Once again, the auxiliary will typically take all of the marking for person and tense, while the lexical verb will be rendered as a converb and left without any such marking. Further evolution may result in the auxiliary fusing with the converbs to become new verb morphology. Converbs may also evolve into new adpositions, conjunctions, or discourse markers. A cross-linguistically common development is for the verb to say, in converb form, to evolve into a complementizer for verbs of speech and thinking. In Manchu, the two different words that roughly translate to until are derived from a combination of the terminative converb and the verb stems to reach and to become. And in Turkish, the converb form of to come can be used as a sort of topic marker. The ability of converbs to turn any verb phrase into a modifier makes them incredibly useful and versatile, and so a language that employs converbs to any degree will likely have them manifest in many areas of its grammar. So in summary, if you want to include converbs in a conlang, decide what types of converbs you want to include, combine non-finite verb forms with case markers, adpositions, or other particles to create converb morphology, extrapolate additional meanings and uses for each of your converbs based on the case markers they evolved from, and grammaticalize converbs into new compounds, adpositions, discourse markers, and verb morphology. Overall, converbs can be immensely useful for deriving all manner of grammatical constructions, but another tool that's bound to be a big help for any conlanger is Campfire. 
Campfire Pro is a writing and world building program designed to help you document every aspect of your conlang and its associated con world. On top of the entries for plotlines, character arcs, maps, and timelines provided by the standard package, the world building pack includes a massive bundle of new features, including pages for species, cultures, religions, magic systems, philosophies, politics, and yes, conlangs. The languages page lets you tabulate your sounds and lexemes in the phonetics and dictionary tabs, while the grammar and pragmatics tabs use a simple and intuitive interface to help you organize all of your language's morphology, inflectional paradigms, and idioms into customizable and easily navigable subdivisions. To try all of these features out for yourself, you can sign up for a 10-day free trial, after which you can get the standard package for a one-time purchase of $50, plus $25 for the world-building pack. If you're interested or want to learn more, check out the link in the description.